Okay, 45 for six. You're good, real good. Holy shit, the camera here when I drop it. Let's be big. Oh man. Might have to strap up here. It's all right. Don't kamikaze. Oh boy. Two. Three. Four. <clears throat> Five. Holy shit. Come on. Come on. Oh, yeah, that's good. <clears throat> All right, what have I been into lately? Cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT. A bit of a mindful practice through Sam Harris's Waking Up app. And a little section on thoughts, feelings, and actions, and the overlap and relation and the connection between every single one of them. That's where some pretty fascinating stuff that I've been learning about. Another one is Cal Newport famous writer of Deep Work. He's a computer scientist, but also spent time as a like, not theoretical physicist, but maybe it was some sort of theoretician at MIT, or just like a professional, like professional athlete thinker, professional cognitive athlete, basically. He's just talking about how the brain works when it comes to deep work and deep thinking and long bouts of getting things done versus pseudo productivity, where it's just like, say, answering emails all the time and kind of going back and forth, and like kind of like, seeming like you're doing work, but it's not actual work. And this idea of deep work where it's focused, four hour blocks, no other distractions, no context switching, just into one topic because the context switching of like, hey, if I look at my phone and answer an email, it just might take me a second, go back to the project, right? Or writing or whatever. But the thing is, is there's a massive cost to switch context from one little thing over to the other. There's like a residual impact of the brain where it takes like 15, 20 minutes to be able to get back into that focus zone that you are in. And um, just like listen to the Anthony Huberman interview with him, the Chris Williamson um, Modern Wisdom interview with him. Fascinating stuff, awesome stuff. So anyways, here we are doing some deep work here at Allegiant, focused, heavy, deep work, good range of motion on these movements, deep range of motion, deep work. About to go up. Um, Another five kilos here to do my last set of four 50 kilos. I'm gonna have to strap up on this one just because it's gonna get pretty heavy. So take you guys along for the ride and um, strong back, strong mind. You know, I've always talked about that and said it, but I feel like I feel like this thread just reminded me that really things change, but everything really stays the same. Oh yeah, this is gonna be a doozy. It's like we don't have any 47 fives here. So as Robert Frost said, the only way is through throughput. That was actually Eli Goldratt. Eli Goldratt was the theory of constraints and throughput. Robert Frost was, I believe, the only way he's through. Eli and Robert. We threw a whole 50 here. <clears throat> oh, wow. Oh, man, that's heavy. One. Two. Three. Last one. Four, wow. I can't remember the last time I maxed out on Contra. I can't remember the last time I maxed out on Contra RDLs. Dumbbell Contra RDL. It's good though. What would Robert Frost do, you know? Eli Goldrat. I know what Emerson would do. He'd shut the hell up and start working. He would to be done with this set. While I'm fraternizing with YouTube. Oh. 
Son of a bitch. Oh yeah. Like to see a little more explosion. Let's get back on the horse here. Been out of training for a little bit. I mean, not not really, but training together a full week right now has been. Tasty, which is what we got going on right now. Hired a new staff manager in the South Bay. I hung on to that position for a really long time, sourced a lot of resumes. And my mindset on that one was like, in the past, I've usually just filled positions just to fill them and move on. But this one, I was like, I'm gonna find the right person for this one, even if I have to work front desk the whole time. And um, I had to work the front desk for a long time, probably like eight weeks on top of the other duties. But you know, that's the cost. You wanna talk a big game, find the right person. You gotta do all the work in the interim, make sure the ships are, ships are still sailing are running on time. Not only that, but they're getting faster and cleaner. And the passengers are telling other passengers how much they love this train ride. And then we found uh, we found a guy. Hopefully, members in the South Bay have met him. I think he's doing a great job so far. Really learning a lot, diving right in, buying the merch, wearing it for the brand. So, you know, we love to see that. It's always a good sign. And seeing the other managers working with him and helping him on board and learning, it's been a really cool byproduct of that. You kind of send some of the onboarding over to them and they can teach him things. And, at perspectives that they have that I don't, which is a really cool thing when you start to have economies of scale when it comes to staff. So really proud of our managers. I think they do a really freaking great job here. Now it's on to the B-Series. You guys wanna know the secret? Secret of this place, secret of everything? Listening to Tchaikovsky while you lift weights. That's the secret. That's it, man. Intensely emotional, simultaneously intellectual symphonies, man. We're talking 15 minute pieces, massive dynamic range, humongous scales. Insane harmonies, cannons, timpani, horns, French horns, trombones, all of it condensed into a little thing you just press play on, you know? Written in the 1800s. That's the secret. Live? Unbelievable. That was live. Are you shitting me? Unbelievable. God. Oh my God. Do you know me? I think. No, Serenade for Strings. Banger.
Ngoài đi. 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 Ngo